Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. There are two things you need to understand if you decide to set up a drip irrigation project all by yourself. Water pressure and flow. It is best to tackle both at a go as they are correlated in a way. But I have decided to start with water pressure and later we will discuss about flow. My earliest interaction with hydraulic physics was in primary school science lessons making holes in a container filled with water i am sure most kenyans did this in their primary school my teacher was like pressure increases with depth and pressure is equal at specific depth the hole at the bottom of the container had the strongest water jet it went farthest i never knew i will need such basics as a farmer so one day i decided to install drip irrigation in my vegetable garden and then i came across this information on the drip line packaging the manufacturer recommends a pressure of 0.5 to 1 bar at which the drip line can deliver 1.2 liters per hour per emitter hmm can i really achieve this before we proceed further let's first refresh on the basics it's not wise to assume you know water in a container has weight and so it exerts pressure on the walls if i remember correctly from my secondary school physics one can actually calculate this pressure using a simple formula usually written like this water density is represented by a greek letter rho written like an italic p and gravitational acceleration is represented by letter g the exact values of these two are known but i plan to round them up to make my life easy see i was not the best math student but one has to survive nespa so if i have water filled to a height of one meter the pressure at the bottom will be approximately 10,000 pascals. At a height of 2 meters, the pressure at the bottom will be 20,000 pascals. And at 3 meters elevation, the pressure will be 30,000 pascals. Hmm, there seems to be a trend here. From this formula, the only thing changing here is the elevation or the height. Density and G are constants. Does it mean if I say to someone, I have two meters of water you can tell what is the pressure maybe that's why the old school plumbers used to talk of feats of pressure and you wonder what does distance got to do with pressure this makes life at the farm very easy so pressure is represented in pascals but wait a minute i have now to change the equals sign to something else else the mathematicians in the house will crucify me okay now the most common units in the field is psi or bars but then again a bar is a big value so in our projects let's use psi so we divide the pascals with 68.95 and we have figures in psi we can work with good now i know you know if i have a full tank of about one meter you know the pressure as the base and should i connect a pipe further two meters downwards you can estimate the total pressure at the end of that pipe hopefully we are now clear with the basics so let's revisit the manufacturer's instructions the recommended pressure was within 7 and 15 psi let's work backwards we have already seen that one meter exact 1.45 psi remember so what about 15 psi for the best case scenario you do your cross multiplication and then you will get around 10 meters of elevation what does this mean to a farmer i know it's not cheap to build those elevated platforms but at least you have a rough idea now of what is expected with such pressure and enough storage you can now try an acre 
If your land is sloppy, then you are one lucky farmer. You can get away with a shorter tank platform. The slope can help you to build enough pressure. You get your main line downhill and install the drips on the benches. You will still have to estimate the expected pressure from the relative height just to see what is viable. Now, I know you are asking, what is my garden system pressure? Am I even close to manufacturer's recommendation? Sometimes in life, you don't get all you wish for. It's a reality, no? I want to see what will be the pressure at the main line. I will fix it on a mini valve using an adapter. I think that will work. Now, let's go and open the ball valve and allow the water to fill the system. The height from the tank water level to the point where I fixed my pressure gauge on the main line is about 2.5 meters. I have an idea in my mind of what to expect. It's almost what I expected. So, since my pressure is below the recommended values, of course, I don't expect the emitters to supply the advertised discharge of 1 liter per hour, but that will be a video for another day. In my previous videos on drip irrigation installation, I had to first level the farm. The beds can be flat or gently sloping from the main line, depending on the land. Besides, each time there is a slope, it's a plus on the pressure. And of course, it goes without saying that you don't want the drip lines to run uphill. The small pressure available has to be utilized efficiently. When installing drip lines, I like to make the beds and the piping as short as possible. Personally, I prefer less than 30 meters for kitchen gardens. Something else to keep in mind when designing a system is that each fitting you use, like elbows, T's, filters, and valves, have pressure drops. So it has to be a minimalistic or simple design with only what is necessary. If you need 15 psi at the mainline, then you have to account for the pressure losses across all the fittings you have used before getting to the drip line. It's like budgeting for money. In case the beds are too long, you may even consider having the main line at the center or having the drips run from the shorter side of the garden. The main problem of using long pipes is that as water flows in a pipe, it actually experiences some friction or resistance on the walls. The loss of pressure in a pipe can be calculated, but I doubt any average farmer would be interested in using the formula. The easiest way is to estimate the loss by using online apps or even the friction loss tables available online. Other routine management practices like checking or cleaning the filter to avoid clogging is very important. I have to mention something about filters. A filter is an important item. That is, if you don't want to keep clogging the drip emitters, ideally, water through a filter will have a small pressure loss. But should the screen inside the filter block due to particles or mold, the pressure and flow will drop significantly. This is an event that can be captured for those dealing with sensors and irrigation automation. Anyway, ensure regular filter cleaning to make your life easier. For large-scale farmers, gravity-fed system may not provide the sufficient pressure required. They have to depend on electric pumps. It is these pumps that force the water up the storage tanks or even, at times, directly on the main line. Other irrigation systems, like the sprinkler system, may require a dedicated pump to operate as required. But let's not talk about pumps today. Besides, I don't have much experience with pumps. I hope you have learned something from the farm. Thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe 
See you in the next video and God bless you.